Hello gamers, welcome back to the games. I am very amped for this episode because it is in direct correspondence with the NPC crew video we had done over a month ago with 11,000 views. I just got done watching around the verse 3.3 and wow did I feel thrilled because Tony Zerovec got on there, which by the way, Tony Zerovec uh, was picked up in 2014 by SIG, very intelligent programmer. He was part of the Crusader series. Uh, in fact, he led the programming for Crusader for Origin. That's the connection. Uh, Chris Roberts knew him from Origin, picked him up in 2014, brought him on the team. I was very excited when that happened, uh, when I learned that information. And Tony's a very intelligent guy. So it was really uh, refreshing for me to see that around the verse where, you know, that was the most exciting part for me. Many people would say uh, new ship designs and, and the other things, but the most exciting part was getting the answers on the NPCs. Now, I'm going to go over them. I'm going to give you my thoughts, analysis on, on what was mentioned in the video. But first off, I would actually like to extend my thoughts and well wishes to Sandy for having to deal with uh, trolls and harassment online. We wish you the very best, Sandy. Please come back. And the masses of us citizens who have class, which is most of us, we need to speak up and speak out against uh, this kind of very cancerous troll type uh, trend that I'm seeing within Star Citizen. We need to cut it out. We have the power, not they. So Sandy, you know, we all wish you well. All right. I, I feel like our voices inspired this particular segment within around the verse, you know, I, I because the way in which they answered the question was almost uh, verbatim answering our questions to that particular video. So I know these videos I do share with Sandy. I know that she shares them with staff. I know that some of the uh, SIG members, the developers especially, do watch the games. It's very happy for that uh, because they do get feedback from us. So perhaps our video was our voice was directly heard and now being answered so i'm very excited to go over this material so first off what can we expect as far as npcs being introduced into uh the universe now what tony's telling us is that around the end of 2016 you will start seeing a smattering of npcs which is interesting because they're going to introduce npcs slowly i thought they were going to kind of like boom lump them right in like 90 10 as we talked about before in prior videos i thought they were just gonna be like, okay here we go nine npcs for one human let's just pop them in real fast and that's not what they're doing they're kind of introducing them slowly so this gives me a little bit more positive vibe about how the economy may react uh upon like npc introduction into the game it's it's a very intelligent way to go about it and because i know that tony's behind it now because he was on this section of the verse, I thought this was a very smart move by Chris Roberts and the people of SIG to actually have Tony up there being the front man saying, okay, here's actually the answers to your NPC questions from directly, almost verbatim from our video. But I, I like how they're going to introduce the NPCs into the game, very, very smart. Well, I'm very happy that he's focusing on talking about NPCs reacting to humans. Uh, I, I like that they're trying to, to create this, as he said, dynamism between the human and the NPC. It seems as if they're putting more thought into actually how the NPCs are reacting to you in the world, which you got to admit, it's not been done successfully yet that where I feel as if these NPCs are so damn lifelike that I'm talking to another human there, I'm reacting with another human. In fact, in most cases, some of our, of our own gamers have mentioned that in fact, humans ruin the immersion for them, that the NPCs make them feel like they're more in the game than the humans do, because you you know, you, when you're on our corp, you're running around, you see all these humans kind of just like run, 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 jump, jump, jump. It's kind of like, okay, wait a second, this is just breaking the immersion for me. And I understand that it's rather funny actually, that you know, when you look at it from that angle, NPCs might actually be more of an immersion factor than actual humans when you're just walking around and you're looking at the ambient cities or wherever it is, wherever it is that you're at. So I, I actually understand that particular argument from our gamers. I think that's rather uh, an interesting angle. But he also talks about the actual uh, look of the NPC in, in a given population, how if the 
area is falling into hard times and crime is is surging into an area that you'll see more shady types of characters more types of poverty types of npc characters whereas like if an area is you know super citizen mode you know people are well to do and walking around very rich looking i and i don't know how they're going to do that but i think that's a fascinating concept to actually change the environment in regards to the population's look so wow it gives me kind of goosebumps to think that they're actually thinking that in depth with the npc look and the environment and and how adaptive that is and now what i've been waiting for in anticipation is the actual answers to the npc crew i think one of the more important parts of the game they they actually say the same thing in the video we said it in the original video this is a very important aspect of the game npc crew what are we going to be able to do well they're not going to be introduced until probably 2017, I would imagine. Tony had said that, you know, we're not ready for this uh, portion of the game yet. They're flushing it out. They're, they're getting all their ideas down. They're putting it in. They're programming it. But what he has planned is, is when you go to a landing zone, there will be a personnel office, an area where you can essentially rent a crewman. Now, you're never really going to be able to purchase them. It's just an ongoing expense. So this is something where credits do play a really important part of the game you know we talk about the economy these characters will eventually these npc crew could in fact just like woof one day you don't have them if you don't have the creds to supply their daily stipend you know they'll have like 500 creds a day or 200 creds a day you know each one has different amounts depending upon their kind of skill set you which you will be able to uh check on which was another answer you'll actually be able to go into them somehow there'll be some interface i'm imagining through the moby glass and you'll be able to see what their skill set is now their skill sets being gunnery piloting mechanics there will be a whole kind of a barrage of of uh, skill sets but they will only be able to actually focus on one area meaning you won't have an npc that will have like two skill sets where they're like super bomb on they're not going to be both amazing pilot and an amazing gunner or an amazing mechanic an amazing pilot you're, you're not going to see that there are other areas to the game where npcs would benefit by having kind of like this multiple kind of skill set however because you cannot buy or sell these and you're running them it gives no value to the npcs you're not really able to take these npcs and then like say okay i'm selling it back into the market which makes sense npcs essentially are trying to be human players and so therefore you can't necessarily like do that in real life where you're like hey you know what i'm going to purchase you and then i'm going to develop you and then i'm going to sell you back i mean that doesn't make any sense so they're they're taking a very humanistic kind of approach to npcs i like it i like overall what they're doing now there are recorded to be some npcs in the game that you can find within the universe that you can interact with that that eventually will say hey do you want me to tag along with you and that's that's an interesting concept bringing that in almost like kind of like a mass effect uh kind of quality to the game and then these characters will follow you for god knows how long or what given point in time if it's just through the storyline or if it's actually for a longer duration and you become friends with npcs that'd be kind of cool and these particular npcs will have more than one skill set so now the these these npcs are more valuable than the other npcs these are these are npcs that you will probably find through missions or, or within the game, secret areas that you'll pick up and will have like multiple skill sets that will be good at both piloting or, or mechanics and gunnery. Um, I like that. That is a very cool concept. Tony had also mentioned that they're actually putting some psychological elements into the NPC. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I mean, like, it sounds like they're trying to make the Uber NPC. You know, so far, so much so that you're like, wow, this is not unlike any other NPC that I've ever dealt with in any game. Now, if they can do that, kudos to them. But I think it's a little bit lofty of a goal to put like psychological elements into an NPC character. For instance, if you have a pilot and he's in a stressful situation, right? There's a lot of guns going around there. You're in a war. And then he goes, oh, God, I can't handle this. I'm having a psychological breakdown. Now, would a player actually have that? Would you want to risk your ship 
in an instance where like you know you put an npc piloting a ship or an npc gunning a ship i i don't know if i'd want npcs but this again might lean more towards the fact that you want human players in the ship over npcs and they might purposely be doing this so that you are forcing interaction with other uh players of the game which would make more sense so you will actually be able to assign tasks to some of these NPCs, for instance, like an engineer being able to fix certain parts of a ship. I thought that was really interesting. Or a security officer in the ship being able to kind of go around and, and scan the area for uh, multiple criteria. Again, how they're going to do that. And if there's options within a Moby glass to give these NPCs command not too clear, they did not answer that particular aspect yet. But these are good, solid answers that we are all asking on the last video that are now answered. And what I thought was interesting is, uh, you know, for instance, if you have an engineer NPC, he's not going to be able to do security tasks. And if you have a security uh, NPC, he's not going to be able to do engineer tasks. So they're very focused on what it is their special abilities are. And another cool uh, feature that they're talking about is that the NPC itself has like a peak performance level. I don't think you're able to know what that is until you hit it. Once you hit it, uh, there will be indication that like, hey, this NPC cannot go farther in his given field. Do you want to just scrap this NPC, let go of this on your uh, balance sheet, and then try your luck with another one, or you want to keep this one? Really interesting because as far as I'm concerned, you know, like if you hit a certain level and it peaks and you're not happy with it. You know i would just try another one but what is the time duration like what was the dilation of time between you know getting the npc how much time do you have to invest in the npc then find what the max peak area is and then go oh my god i just spent like a week or two <laughs> trying to get this gunner up he's up to his peak and his peak really blows and i just spent two weeks do i want to actually scrap him am i going to keep him on higher in another or am I just going to scrap them and, and go you know all out and just do it all over again? So pretty interesting dynamics there. So in essence, this peak performance is kind of like the lottery. You know, when you go to the personnel office and you're getting a, an NPC character, you don't know what you're what you're necessarily getting. When you develop them and you take the time into them, you might have like all stars, like NPC all stars that you develop as an NPC all stars all star staff, but because you cannot sell it back into the market to somebody else that makes it very interesting because you are your crew is basically an extension of you the time that you take to develop your npc crew i i really think that's an innovative approach you're not going to have like a, an inundation of you know like like amazing all-star npcs because nobody's going to be able to sell them Essentially, when you're done with the NPC, if, or if you don't have the creds to maintain the employability of the NPC, it's gone forever in the ether. And then you have to go back to the personnel office and you can't trade these NPCs. So this, this puts everything on a very level playing field. Kudos, Tony. Really well done and thought out. Now that we're talking about this, I think that is a very excellent feature of this game when talking about NPC crew. We are predominantly focused on ships with smaller crews at the moment. In order to make some of the larger ships really feel occupied, though, you might need many dozens or even hundreds of NPCs. Wait, what was that? Let's hear that again. You might need many dozens or even hundreds of NPCs. Well, 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 confirmation of actually needing a hundred plus NPCs in a ship, meaning you can control or own a ship worthy of a hundred plus, maybe capital ships. We got a lot of flack for that on the last NPC, a panel discussion that we had had because I had mentioned, what if you need a hundred or so NPCs on a capital ship and people, oh my God, I got so many comments saying that's not what's going to be in the game you can't say that and guess what those trolls just got scorched <laughs> Aha, take that put that in your pipe and smoke it anyway <laughs> i think what we got here is sig listening to us they are watching our videos and they are looking at the comments. Uh, Chris, Sig, Sandy, they are starving for feedback and this channel is giving exactly that to them. I'm happy that this channel can do that because it's helping us get our voice out there and helping the game become more of what it is that we want now. The NPCs on a large scale 
will kind of be like a hierarchical system how they have it set up they want you to not really worry about all of the cooks and I did say cooks they did mention cooks and janitors security guards kind of like the more menial type of tasks which I mean if they got cooks you got to think food's gonna be worth something so that's also maybe another answer maybe they listen to our survival video but they said at the particular office that you're at where you can get your personnel that you won't be really really concerned with that it'll basically give you options as if you want like a skeleton crew if you want to you know if you if you really want it like crammed up you got a large ship and you just want like maximum crew then you can hire that you know within a couple clicks and then the senior officers they want to become close to you they want your senior officers to be like extensions of you extensions of the ship very personable of to you and they will also consider putting them under an insurance along with the ship which i thought was very cool now how they're going to do this they're still working on it they still got a long way to go this is going to be way into 2017 you know this is probably not even going to be flushed out till probably mid to end 2017 this game is going to continue to be worked on but I'm very happy that the NPC crew questions were answered. Thank you so much, Tony. Thank you so much, Sig. Thank you, Chris, Sandy, for watching and listening and answering our questions here on to games. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I really want to take the time and just let you guys know that I appreciate you so much for watching. Those that have stuck uh, through this whole entire video, pat yourself on the back because I think you guys are more passionate about Star Citizen than anybody else and possibly the games I'm hoping our channel as well and if you are taking another step further go to our patreon page and help us with some type of uh, cash and that's our version of financial support so go there see what I'm about a little bit more backstory there what I want the channel to be and thank you for watching the games much more Star Citizen on the way always here on the games thank you see you on the next vid